Well, now we need to go on to, this is number two in the series, on how to make a podcast. We're going to open GarageBand. Now, when you first click on it, it uh, loads a bunch of different things. And um, it's actually opened up at uh, one that I've already done as a test. What you will see is this, if you haven't opened one before. Uh, and you've got to make a choice between a new music, music project, a um, new podcast episode, new movie score, or um, open an existing pro uh, project. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a new a new podcast episode. So click on that. And it says, hey, what sort of podcast episode do you want to call it? What do you want to call this thing? I'm going to call it, of course, my favourite title, Test 1. I call everything that I do when I'm mucking around test one, two, three. The reason is then I can just do a, um, uh, that already exists, so I'm writing over it. The reason I do it is because it's um, easy to find, then I can do a search and get rid of all my old test files, which I don't need. Now, GarageBand, let me take you round GarageBand in this episode. Uh, you've got tracks. There's a podcast track. Now, if you're doing a video, uh, version that would be a video track but it's not it's a podcast track if so uh, I'm going to do a series on the video one but uh, this one we're just doing is uh, audio but that doesn't mean it can't be sophisticated and it will be sophisticated v video podcasts are absolutely enormous and you, you probably don't want to make them more than about three minutes long because they become unwieldy and difficult to download so um, this is one way of of uh, making it interactive if you have a podcast track you can also drop artwork and do markers and all sorts of interesting things on it it has a, a combination of male voice, voice or female voice <coughs> choose the one that suits you um, there isn't one for anybody who's uh, a transsexual which I think is uh, missing a, a large market but nevertheless, we, there should be there should be one for for uh, all three. I think uh, any any form of gender you care to be, that's fine by me. Um, there's jingles, which is self-explanatory. They allow you to um, do the kind of jingles you get on the radio um, and radio sounds. Uh, both of those, all of these are sort of set up to particular frequency responses that are, are nice for those things. Okay, we'll move ourselves down here. This allows you to squeeze up what you're seeing. So if you look at it here, when you're looking at the um, the podcast as it comes up, um, when you've got a long one, you want to have it that far. If you want to look at uh, a um, something very closely, you'll you'll drag that uh, backwards. We'll come to that again. This button allows you to create a new track. Um, but uh, more often than not you never use it because you create tracks by dragging things to the blank section here and a track will be created. This one allows you to um, hide the loop browser. This is the loop browser here which shows you basically um, the recording that you've made. We'll make more sense of that later. You can hide that or view that. Um, here is start and stop recording. Uh, you can see all of these yourself. Go to the beginning of the, of the song, uh, move back one measure, um, start and stop playback, use that a bit, although the spacebar does that too. Uh, and I tend to use the spacebar. It's easy to just hit the spacebar because your hand's sort of near it. Um, move ahead one measure and um, the other one's loop. You know, producer. Uh, to turn the cycling region on and off, so you can you can have. Uh, well, we'll go we'll go back to that later. This gives you exactly how long <coughs> um, the uh, where the playhead is, uh, how long the series is, how long the the um, recording is, and so forth. Here you've got the um, sound volume that you're going to hear, and uh, here you've got. Um, view or hide the track information. Now track information is incredibly important. Uh, click on that and it, it, don't forget that the track information is dependent upon the track you're on. So 
if you want to look at, um, for instance, the podcast track is a track that goes out on the podcast itself with the artwork and so forth. So when we put artwork there, the podcast track, we click on this one, so that's there. Um, it says there's no artwork available, but it's got the episode info, and you'll write in, you'll click in here, change the episode, who the person is. That defaults to what you, what the users called that you're uh, creating this from. Parent advisory um, and the description of each episode. That's each episode, right? Um, not the the. Uh, not the podcast itself, so that each episode has a description and uh, each podcast or the, the podcast series has a description which is defined by um, the uh, iWeb page that we looked at in the last one. Now all of this stuff here gets generated into a tag called item in your, I, in your uh, RSS dot uh, xml file which is the important file that um, the itunes music store reads and i've discovered that most of the problems occur uh, in that file more than they do anywhere else so um, i've done a, a, an episode two episodes in iweb about how to um, uh, make changes to that file or to look at it and see if there's problems with it that's that's the file that gets looked at when you when you submit a feed to um, to the iTunes Music Store, and you need to get that absolutely right. So if you follow this closely, you will get that right first time. Okay. Okay. So now um, I'm going to actually stop here. We've gone through the major components of it. Um, you see, also this is where you drop the the podcast um, artwork. Um, and I'm going to go and do all of that. We're going to start by recording and then we're going to throw some artwork, we're going to put some chapters on it and uh, we're going to wh whack some sounds in the background and do some nice stuff called ducking and a bit of music and uh, that's all going to happen in the next couple of episodes. See you then.